Even though COVID-19 has spread to 110 countries and caused more than 4,000 deaths worldwide, there is still a long list of countries not showing the level of political commitment needed to match the level of the threat we all face, as is said by the World Health Organization. And the general public around the world seem to be still gathering in groups and not avoiding them, as recommended by health officials. So let's try to bust some misconceptions which could have serious negative consequences. Joining me on the Skype from Wuhan is uh, Dr. Zhu Chou-Wen, Vice President of Zhongshan Hospital, affiliated to Fudan University. He is also head of the uh, hospital's medical assistance team for Wuhan. So uh, I guess the biggest uh, misconception or or confusion surrounds the mortality rate. On Tuesday, the World Health Organization announced that the mortality rate for the virus is higher than the original 2.3% estimate, which is actually closer to 3.4%. So, um, Dr. Zhu, you have been in Wuhan and you have seen very closely uh, how the situation unfolds in in, in the hospital that you have been helping and uh, I understand you have been helping severe cases infected with the virus. What have been, what has been the observation from your perspective? I think the situation in Wuhan is getting better now definitely and the severe cases have been treated and turned to mild cases and discharged as well. But also still we have quite many in hospital cases Say uh, yesterday, the President Xi Jinping uh, said that there are around 18,000 cases in hospital cases. Among them, 4,701 4, cases are severe and uh, very severe cases. So we're still facing a, a huge task for us. Hmm. What about the mortality rate then? What has been the, the figures among the severe cases that you have been paying attention to, Dr. Zhu? Yeah, I think generally seeing the severe cases definitely with a high, relative high mortality rate. But I'm not so clear about the definition of the mortality rate 3.4 uh, currently announced by WHO. Since uh, in China we have such a long period of uh, fighting with the disease, uh, more than two months already, but globally that's just starting. So the 3.4, I think it's just a temporary ratio hmm. of the cases who died when uh, for those who got diagnosed and died uh, above those who get diagnosed. Okay, so, so it's not the real, it's not a final mortality rate. It's not the final mortality the rate. Yeah, so what yeah, is the yeah. number that people can use to understand, let's say, based on the knowledge that we have at this moment, the, the danger posed by this virus then, Dr. Zhu? Yeah, the danger you may say is there, but we have to estimate how large it is, since uh, the, the, this kind of estimation is important or crucial for us to decide our behavior. And also it's crucial for the government to make that decision. I know that uh, in, in, in China, in Wuhan, that the mortality rate or case Fatality rate, I said more exactly, mm. is around 5% in Wuhan. Mm. But in other provinces outside Hubei province, it's around 1%. It's, a, it's around 1%. Okay. It's around 1%. So, it, so uh, previously yeah. I was told that globally, when in Japan or in states, the uh, mortality rate or case fatality rate is around 1% to 2%. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Then it's uh, the the danger is there, but you have to estimate the by different situation by your own thinking and also the surroundings. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I, I I think so. I agree that that's the reason that why the government sends our hospital and other hospitals from other provinces to come. Okay. And they also turn quite many wards into infectious to severe wards 
to to host these patients. All right. So basically, yeah. so basically, you have been saying is that in, if you have enough hospital beds, if you have enough medical attention, medical treatment, or medicine, then you can bring down the fatality rate considerably. So, yes. but that means that yes. you don't have a, a large number of people falling ill at the same time. Then let me ask you about the the exposure. Bit, uh, the difference in exposure or the vulnerability of different age groups. Some people we have seen, as reflected on social media posting, uh, such as this one saying, you're only 22, COVID-19 don't affect younger people like older people. Um, how much shall we, shall we believe in that? And how much more nuance shall we look at the age difference, Dr. Zhu? Well, age difference is there, and with the different uh, severity of the diseases. But it doesn't mean uh, uh, this virus uh, doesn't attack the young generation. Still, there are something of the mechanism that we are not so clear, but also the toxication of the toxicity of the virus. There's also first generation; they have more high toxicity to the to, to the population. And the doctors, the young doctors like Dr. Liu Wenliang, also his colleagues were attacked and also got to very, uh, some fatal situation. But generally saying the old generation with uh, some basic diseases with comorbidity, definitely they, they have more these uh, uh, chance uh, to go to the end of when their you, life. When you say old and young, what is your definition, Dr. Zhu? Well, here I am. Um, uh, well, I cannot say it more exactly, but for us, we not me have done these uh, uh, research or general interrupt. survey. That's around 50 to 60, 60 around. Yeah. Six. Yeah. You mean 60 and above would be considered older, <coughs> according to yes. your definition? All right. Yes, uh, so, how about? Yeah. yeah. Um, in Asians, Caucasians, uh, African, or? or is there a difference between this uh, biological racial line, Dr. Zhu? I, I have no data for that. You I have, have no data. data. Area I want to touch upon is the cruise ships. I mean, we've seen very dramatic differences in the handling of uh, different cruise ships so far, and now there are still people going on cruise ships because, for instance, uh, thousands of passengers still boarded this ship called Norwegian Sky on Monday in Miami, and here are some of the remarks about the virus. For instance, this 20-year-old student says, if we sanitize, it will be fine. And then another says, worst comes to worst, we get quarantined. And then other people say, uh, if, if he's going to avoid contact with a lot of people, he should be fine. But if you do, wash your hands. Dr. Ju, um, should they be relaxed about uh, things and still continue with uh, their plans about a cruise line vacation? But well, I think it also depends the 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 tourist the group who get on the cruise, whether there are some patients or some even some ones in the incubation uh, period, they may have some transmission of the diseases. But so we still have to do some epidemiological study for those tourists. But I think then. Uh, Going for a cruise is kind of a lifestyle. And when we tell the population the truth of the, uh, the situation among the different groups in different regions, and that also means the different risks they are facing, if the risk is high, surely the government or some authorities need to say something. But if the, if the risk is not so high, I, I don't have the definite number, but it then gave the population, the, to the tourists, to make the decision. And I think education is also important, how to avoid these close contacts and teaching them, some mm -hmm. educating them for some methods okay. to, 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 to help themselves. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's a very tough decision then. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you want to add on that? What is your observation, or what is China's conclusion after rather successfully containing the, the virus by now? Yeah, also, I think the incubation uh, days is a mild longer than 14 days. I agree, since we have some cases uh, that may we suspect that they have 40 days or something. But I think this means that we, we haven't realized that virus and the disease is caused very clearly. The pathogenesis, the disease caused so clearly. So we still need to more, do more research and give more observation mm -hmm. 
and researches for this. Yeah. And it takes time. It takes time, but yeah. uh, we, but still, we need to do that. Yeah. Well, 14 days is already a long time for a lot of people. Yeah, it's already a long time. Social economic yeah. cost is already pretty sure. high, so everybody mm -hmm. has to strike a balance. Anyway, it's not it's not black and white. Uh, a lot of uh, information no. is out there, so we need to uh, prepare ourselves. Many thanks to Dr. Zhu Chou Wen from uh, Zhongshan Hospital in Shanghai.